Thanks for tuning in to Andrea in the Morning. This is Andrea Raquel, the social entrepreneur and sugar-free coach. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in and following. I hope you've liked our page on Facebook. That's facebook.com forward slash sugar-free coach, as well as on Twitter. You can catch me on Twitter at Sugar Free Coach. I will follow back and reciprocate. I always do. You're listening to Andrea in the morning. I'm your host, Andrea Raquel, the social entrepreneur and sugar free coach. Living sugar-free is not a diet, it's a lifestyle. I am the brand. It is all about you being free from all the things that have kept you in bondage. It don't matter if we talk about food, if we talk about medication, if we're talking about labels, if we're talking about relationships, hair crack, for y'all, those of y'all who don't know, that's what we call relaxer, um, or the other kind of hair crack where you feel like you need curly hair, right? Um, diet and exercise, even being sugar-free, okay? If you choose to go the sugar-free route and give up dairy and sugar, the purpose is not. So you can walk around and brag about it and act like, oh, that's who you are now because it's not. Somebody else going to snatch the rug out from under you and now you're back in bondage. It's also not for you to go and beat other people over the head and act like, ooh, la, 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 look at me. I don't eat any sugar. You should do the same. Ooh, I drive an electric car. I'm so much better than you. That is not the point. And I dare say that when you operate in that type of energy, you're sabotaging all of your efforts. So whatever the thing is that you're doing for the benefit of yourself, for the benefit of Gaia, for the benefit of the community, global community, your family and others, if you're doing it in a way where you're lording it over people, you're sabotaging your own efforts and you're not getting as much value out of the thing or the situation or the effort or the activity as you would be if you just did it for the sake of doing it, for the sake of joy, for the sake of love, right? But that's not so easy, y'all. It's not. And the reason I know it's not easy is not because I think it's hard. You see, because this is an Aspie secret. Everything I'm talking about, y'all, is just kind of naturally the way I think. And I spent a lifetime of learning that the, the natural ways that I think aren't normal, but I need to keep doing it anyway. Because I have had the luxury and the privilege of seeing things come full circle, where things that I got called a weirdo for or didn't fit in for are now the things that everybody's desperate to do. <laughs> How lucky am I to get to see that come to fruition, right? And so what I like to help other people with is, you know, Take on some of the characteristics. It don't matter that they made a list of things and they said, this is how autistic people act. And we're going to put them over there in a category and we're going to call them weirdos. And y'all are all normal. But if all the normal people are miserable and the autistic people are over there going, hey, ooh, la, 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 we having so much fun. Don't you think you might ought to learn a thing or two from over there? Or is it so important for you to be normal <laughs> that you don't think that you might want to learn something from people who are quote unquote not normal? Right. And so what happens is when you come into this world slightly different than other people in whatever capacity that is, whatever. OK, whatever kind of way you come into this world that doesn't fit into the quote unquote norms and mores. If you learn how to master it. If you take back your own power and own who you are. It will absolutely be a secret, a tool, a technique, a class you can teach, something that can help somebody else. Okay, so the Aspie secret for today, food for thought, if you will, is all of the stuff that you feed your mind on a daily basis. It's all food for thought. It's all material for you to build on or tear down. It's all information for you to learn and grow from or for you to be pulled backwards. It's all, you know, um, learning and, and emotions and situations and experiences, right, that you can build on and level up from. Or they can be things to keep you in bondage. 
obviously, if living sugar free is about living free from all of the things that have ever kept you in bondage, only you know what things you're in bondage to or have been in bondage for, to, you got to make a list. I can't make your list for you. You have to make a list of the things that have kept you stuck, right? You may have overcome most of them. Y'all, sometimes when I talk to people, I can hear it in your voice, the things that you're in bondage to. In the way that you engage and communicate with me. For example, if when I talk to you, everything out of your mouth has to do with what somebody else said, chances are you care too much about what other people think. Not only do you care too much about what other people think, you got some people around you thinking some unsavory things and saying some unsavory things out loud about you. That's two issues. Because you could be a person who cares a lot about what people think and you kind of stay to yourself and you've kind of cut ties with a lot of people that have harmed you, but you didn't necessarily get past the, the, the need, right? to know what they think of you and to have that be a positive image, okay? Because some people just run away from the relationships. And then there are other people who, um, they have a lot of people around them and the people aren't necessarily doing and saying negative stuff, but you might be exhausting the relationships because you're going too far overboard to make people prove to you that you're good enough or um, fishing for compliments and all these types of things. Or you just don't ever let nobody talk without you hearing what they have to say through your own personal lens of trauma. People pleasers um, and people who have a need to be liked not necessarily the same thing, okay? Um, but people pe pleasers and people who have a need to be liked can oftentimes get thrown into the category of the people with the savior complex, but it's not necessarily the same people. And only you know your motivation, right? But regardless of which category you might fall into, or maybe, you know, it changes. Maybe you went through something in life and it changed, okay? But regardless of which one of these types of thoughts affect you, the last thing you want to be doing is reinforcing that shit. And it's almost impossible not to. Like, I really don't think that a lot of people, mature people, smart people, degreed people, even some people who are therapists and coaches, I really don't think some people realize the extent of the propaganda and the system that they live in. So they're continuously saying things like, I just don't understand why people blank. I just wish people would blank. I just want people to blank. And that's not always from people pleasing. It's not always from wanting to be like, sometimes that's the savior complex. I tell this joke often, it's a, well, it's not a joke. It's true, but it's a joke to me because, you know, my horoscope as a Capricorn all my life, I've been looking at these words. Capricorns are either great world leaders or serial killers. What? You're telling me I don't have a choice in the matter? <laughs> I'm glad those are the options they gave me because obviously I'm going to choose great world leader, <laughs> you know? But if the options were more vague and I had that seed planted in me as a young child, who knows? You know what I'm saying? Because I take shit literally. Okay, so you think, oh, great. You choose to be a great world leader. Wonderful, great choice. You're going to be successful in life. Uh, not necessarily. There are a whole lot of people throughout our history who chose the great world leader option. Maybe they didn't even see it the way I did. They just knew, you know, but they chose the great world leader option. And somehow, I don't know what the science is. I don't know what the marinade is. Everybody takes their experiences and does something different with it. You might go find a black woman who's an Aspie and who's a retired uh, or who's a veteran and who worked in banking, you know, all their men, they're the same age as me and they might be the serial killer. Mm, the statistics say not so much, but whatever, you get my point. When you go on that road to be that great world leader, <laughs> 
you going to find out that you might have tendencies towards serial killer. And if all y'all cringed when I said that, mm, you need to take a step back. Because if you're looking at the people in this world who commit crimes like they're so different than we are, you missed it. You missed a huge thing. Because first of all, you were them at some point. And if you ain't never been, then you going to be. And for those of y'all who don't believe in, you know, the full circle of life, I, I'm not talking to y'all. But for the rest of y'all that know <laughs> that you've been here before, you don't know what you was doing last time. So how are you going to operate in hate and blame towards someone that's only doing what you used to do? That shit don't make no sense to me. No, seriously. But I've also had pastors in my life and teachers who have made this claim for me um, in articulating, oh, in the church, they say it like this, there but for the grace of God go I. And if you ain't never been in the church, then you don't know maybe that, that, that what that means is <laughs> there's a fine line between me and that person over there. I'm not better than they are. They just ended up where they ended up some kind of way, and I would not dare put my mouth on it. Because if I do the next time around, guess who I'm going to be? Them. <laughs> and y'all, that happens right here in our life. Like, I can't tell you the number of times I've been in a situation, um, you know, leading a team of people, right? And then you have your manager, your assistant manager, you got your third key. So you got this cadre of people that's up close to you. And so they think they shit don't stink. Okay. And so the people who are beneath y'all, the, the employees or the grunts or whatever the situation, y'all have been in all of the kind of situations. Okay, from the military to the high end. And the people who are at that level next to you, they think that it's about to be a party and we just about to kick all the employees in the teeth and we just going to exercise all of our nastiness on them and they get a rude act. Well, awakening when they find out I don't play them type of games. Like, I will fire you and give them one of them your promotion if you play with me. Because I don't know what makes you think you're so much better than they are, right? It's a... Um, it's a mean kid syndrome. It's a, and y'all, even people who have been bullied in life, even the nerdiest one in the group who never had no friends and got picked on, sometimes when they finally get an opportunity, they end up being the mean kid. And that's always like mind blowing to me because my natural inclination is to not do that, right? But I had to study humanity and I had to find out that hurt people hurt people. Hmm? So if we know that hurt people hurt people, isn't it a good idea to find out if the people that we're promoting to be in leadership over other people are going to be walking in their hurt, are going to be walking in their abuse, are going to be exercising the same things that they learned on the next generation of people, which is just going to perpetuate everything, keep everything going, keep the generational curses going. We're not growing. We're not going nowhere. It looks like it's changing a little bit. But in reality, behind closed doors, the leaders are beating the employees upside the head or whatever this is. It could be a club, whatever the thing is, family, whatever. Right. So you've implemented all these things to change and you think y'all are going somewhere. But because you didn't check your leaders, you're going to stay right where you was at. And the same mess going to stay in the same mess. That's what's going on in this country right now. All of the spiritual enlightened people are talking about this great shift. And we are absolutely, um, according to, um, according to the annals of history, the archives, the calendars, um, all of the things, everything that tracks this from a spiritual to a tangible, we are in a shift. But how quickly the shift is going to take place and how impactful the shift is and how long it takes and like all of this type, we absolutely, we have, we are going to affect that. If we just sit on our pillows meditating and act like, oh, we've arrived and everyone else is beneath us, the shift is going to take longer. And so I'm, I'm presenting this talk about food for thought because I want everyone who knows that they're growing and changing, who knows that they're on a journey of love and spirituality, growth and enlightenment, being the change, leadership, and all this kind of stuff. Kudos, bravo, congratulations. I pat you on the back. Now I'm going to put my foot, my, my boot in your behind because that's what my job is to do.
I'm the leader's leader. I'm the coach's coach. I teach boot camps. My job is not to give you roses and flowers and say, oh my gosh, it's so wonderful that you decided to be a decent human being. That's not my job. You celebrate that for yourself. My job is to remind you that after you decided to become a decent human being, it doesn't mean that you're perfect. It doesn't mean that you're better than everybody else. And it doesn't mean that you can just go around exercising your, your pain and your harm and your nastiness and the shit that you haven't got up off of you on other people. And we are all subject to it if we're not careful. Okay. And even if we are careful, it might slip out sometimes. And then you need to be mindful enough to catch yourself and apologize. And I'm just going to say, how many people are listening right now? I don't know who all is listening. So don't think I'm talking about you specifically. It's 23 people listening. I have at least heard 23 people on this app commit to things that I'm saying. So if you're wondering if I'm talking about you, just receive it and say, yes, I'm guilty. Go look in the mirror and say, Andrea, whatever your name is, don't call yourself Andrea, but say, Andrea, what pain, what trauma, what self-esteem issues am I still dealing with that might be causing me to unnecessarily take stuff wrong or to, you know, feel the need to over justify myself or over explain or over talk people or it's, yeah. If I'm talking to you and I say, oh, I love working in my garden, uh, the dirt, I've learned so much about the dirt and, you know, I'm, I'm building, I'm, I'm creating my own dirt because I figured out it, it was expensive and, and you're like, oh my gosh, I've been gardening for 30 years and such and such and such. And I'm like, yeah, okay. So, well, and you're like, yeah, you can make your own dirt. And I'm like, yeah, I started composting. And you're like, no, it's not com called composting. It's called, you're not listening. <laughs> and you're too quick to, to disagree with me because it absolutely is composting. You see, like the number of times that's happened on this app to me and I've listened to it happening to other people, we shouldn't be doing that over here. I'm not saying we all need to be perfect. I'm saying that let's just make sure that as we talk in all this yang on this app, because me personally, I don't know about y'all, but I'm inviting everybody I know. I'm inviting, oh, there's people listening on this. There's people who have joined this app who got PhDs. They're doctors. They do their own coaching and consulting and, and therapy for their own clients, and they joined Wisdom. Hello, somebody, y'all. We are on to something huge. This is gold. This app is unheard of. It's unlike anything else. Yeah, there's a lot of people trying to copy it, and there were before a lot of people who tried to do something dissimilar, okay? Dio did a wonderful job. Her team is amazing, but the rest of it is going to be up to us. If this app fails miserably, we're going to have to eat that and own it. We're not going to say, I I'm not going to let everybody say anyway. I'm not going to let the story be that the app sucked and the developers didn't do right and, and the founder didn't have the right vision. Because, you know, the whole uh, Ma Mandela effect is very real. Stuff will come and go, and then a year or two will go by, and then the story that's told about it, it's not even close to the truth, because I was there. That's not what happened. And I'm not going to let this app go out like that, okay? So if you got any animosity going on with anybody, I'm going to need for you to fix it and quit acting like a child, okay? If you got any clubs and cliques that you built up on this app where you're trying to, like, keep other people out of it, I'm going to need for y'all to stop. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't know better, okay, if you're so privileged that you don't know this bit of wisdom, or if your whole life you've just been so unpopular that you haven't gotten to live through this, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to y'all. And I didn't used to be this bold. But now, after these 15, almost 20 years I've been on the internet watching this shit happen repeatedly, and before that, for 20 years, I watched it happen in real life, I'm going to say it plainly. Your little club is going to crash and burn. Somebody in your club is going to stab you in the back. They're going to turn on each other. Everybody going to fall out. And then you're going to be looking to the people that you alienated to try to pick up the pieces for you. Right? Oh, let's go get Andrea. Oh, let's go get Sharente. Oh, oh, let me go get Cicely because they're sweet. And they always talk to me. And I know they'll still talk to me even though 
I treated them like we had a mean kid club over here and they couldn't be a part of it. And y'all, I'm just saying their names. Neither Cicely or Sharente have told me anything about anything on this app. I'm just, listen, I'm just doing what I do. People have called me a witch. They've called me a fortune teller. I, I don't like being right and I always am, okay? So I'm just at a space with my living sugar-free journey that I don't really care anymore who gets mad. If something is on my heart and I feel like it's a need to say it because I feel like in the spirit, I feel like I see the shit going on, I'm going to say it. Because when it happens, I'm not going to be walking around with the guilt that I could have potentially stopped it and didn't say nothing. Okay? So I trust me when I say it's not fruitful. But not only that, let's talk about it from a, from a stewardship standpoint. This is not your app. You don't own it. I don't care if you was one of the first people on here. This is not your shit. And unless Dio told you, hey, I need you to go over there and do that, you don't have no business doing anything that would hinder or sabotage this app or the growth of it or the connection between the people. How dare you and who do you think you are? Start your own app, okay? And we don't even have to start our own apps. I got my own website. I have my own subscription programs. I got my own back-end video chat. I have my own shit. So if I don't want to be on Wisdom, I don't have to. And if y'all don't want to be on wisdom and you don't know that you don't have to, I suggest you stop acting like you didn't hear me offer you a solution already and go and send me a message and ask me to help you set it up so that you don't have to be at the mercy of this app or any other app to cause you to be in your feelings to where you're doing stuff and you end up being the one to sabotage it. <clears throat> it's plain and simple. These are the things that change agents do. These are the things that true leaders are willing to do. These are the things. And if you're walking around on this app talking about, I'm not a leader. I'm not here to tell anybody what to do. I'm just here to learn. I'm not talking to you. Then you keep on doing what you're doing. But be careful about how um, mm, definitively you talk on this app. If you're not here to teach and lead, you're just here to learn. Mm, make sure that you're walking in that. Because a lot of people walk around talking about, I'm not nobody's leader. Meanwhile, they circling people around them, getting a club going and creating a mutiny. And if that's you, you might want to check yourself. And if I have struck a nerve with anybody here today, just know I'm helping you. I don't know who you are. I don't know who I'm talking I have intentionally stayed out of all drama over the past year on social media. But I came onto this app intentionally not giving a shit about anybody's drama. Literally looking at the dumpster fire, drinking my soda and being like, mm, I hate that for them. Because that's me maintaining my peace. I'm tired of being everybody's warden. I'm tired of being a principal at a school with a whole bunch of unruly kids who don't want to listen. So I'm not putting myself into those situations anymore. I am a leader's leader and a coach's coach. And I am here to talk and edify and encourage and help others see how powerful they are. But I'm not running after you to do it. I'm not coming to your house to do it. Because I don't have a package that I could charge you money to come to your house and do that for you. And I'm not coming to your house and doing that for free. Because if I have to come to your house and help you evolve your life in the living sugar-free type of vein, that's not a safe environment for me if you're not paying me. Because why? If we have to go to that far, you're going to end up taking it out on me. And I'm an infantry soldier, so yes, yeah, probably not a good idea for you for me to put myself in that situation. These are the ways that I have designed my life because I know me. I know that I can't be everybody's girlfriend and come show up at your house and you're dealing with some issues and I got all the solutions, right? And you see that I got all the solutions and, oh, I'm so nice. I'm so sweet. I'm going to come to your house and help you. I'm not stupid like that anymore. I'm not everybody's savior. I ain't never been a people pleaser, but I did have the savior complex. Bad. And I'm telling y'all, I don't have it no more. And this is what it looks like. And it might be offensive to some people. But I ain't said nothing wrong to nobody. I ain't throw nobody under the bus. I didn't call nobody out. 
So if you're mad at me, I haven't had any conflicts with anybody on this app at all. Not a single one. There is not a single person on this app other than the fact that there's somebody on this app that I've known from a really, really long time ago and they might still be mad at me, but I still don't care. I don't care. I love all of y'all as human beings and as individuals. And I still love you even if you're mad at me. And if you're mad at me and you talk to me, I can hear it in your voice that you're mad at me and I'm still going to love on you anyway. Because I don't need you to like me. That's like being a teacher at an elementary school and being pissed off because your students don't want to be your best friend. Ugh, grow up. That's what I tell them. Hi, I'm John M. Ketchum. I'm the author of The Zero's Journey, a modern day survival guide to weathering <laughs> accidental enlightenment. And you're listening to The Living Sugar Free Lifestyle Show. With Andrea in the morning. Myself. Grow up. You put yourself out here. You decided to create this brand where you were going to be the leader's leader and coach's coach. What about that says everybody going to want to be your best friend? Nothing. So why would you expect that? I, I don't. And the people who hear me talk and push past that and want to be connected to me and be around me anyway, those are the people that I'm like, oh, yeah, they get it then we can hang out and we can talk and we ha can have conversations and I can be open with them. It's very few people like that. I can't be open with everybody because some people, everything I say, they take it like I'm putting them down. I realize I'm an impressive person. I realize I've done a lot of impressive shit in my life. I realize that I'm very bold and outspoken. That's why I go out of my way to encourage that in others. That's what I have to give. That's what I have to offer. Not everybody can get past that to be close to me. And I'm cool with that. And I need all y'all to be cool with that. Those who are really meant to be your soulmates, they're going to be your soulmates. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to be fake. And you don't have to be mad about who doesn't like you. Okay, so I kind of got off my point a little bit, but I'm getting back to it. When you watch... TV and you have no control over what's coming on the TV, or you don't take control over what's coming on TV, you just watch whatever. When you scroll social media, the Facebook news feed is the one everybody talks about. That Facebook news feed is a monster. And the reason the Facebook news feed is a monster is because it doesn't matter if you have a little neat little circle of 40 friends like I do. All change agents and all love and light. Guess what? Them 40 people still go through stuff sometimes. Sometimes them 40 people cry about the stuff they're going through a little bit more excessively than I would like them to. <laughs> but worse than that, Facebook slams stuff in my news feed according to the algorithms of oppression, according to in the company of my sisters, in the court, according to the social dilemma, and according to all of the other realities of the propaganda and the system that we live in. And as an Aspie, this is an Aspie secret for y'all. When I'm scrolling my newsfeed, I don't forget that. I don't forget that I live in a system. Okay. I don't forget that it's all propaganda. Because sensory overload is very real. And if you've ever been around me and you've glossed over it, it's ableist. You just need to know that's ableist. I don't go around calling people ableist, um, but I just need y'all to know that, okay? Sensory overload is a real thing. And if you're not a person who lights, sounds, and touch, like even tags in your clothing, okay? Even if it gets too cold outside, your skin hurts, okay? And it doesn't have anything to do with health issues, okay? Okay. Um, and information, all of these things can cause sensory overload. And the scientific reason is because for these people, their synapses fire faster than other people's do. And if you don't know what that's like, you probably cannot begin to be an, imagine what it's like to be a human being and be completely happy, completely peaceful, completely enjoy, and get overloaded by um, inputs 
that are out of your control. You can't begin to imagine the physical pain of that. Okay, the, it, it, it's, it, it, it feels like, you know them conductors, you know how you have a, an explosion in your neighborhood where the lights, the power line blows? That's how your body feels when you go through that. And for those of us that have been going through that all of our lives, before we had the words to describe it, like, it, it was crazy. It literally, I, I have a joke I make about spontaneous combustion that I have been making for a very long time, long before I ever even knew I was autistic. Okay, because that's what it feels like. It feels like you're going to burst into flames. Okay. And so if you have that, you probably have a really hard time, especially how if you have a lot of people around you and if you're not, you know, like, you know, retired and working from home or whatever, you know, just have your life just so like I do, you, you probably really have a hard time with that on a daily basis. And when we talk about meltdowns, that's not always like these visible meltdowns that y'all can see. Sometimes the person had a wonderful, successful day. They won, they achieved everything, but now they got to go lay on their couch for three days because the physical is, is too much for them, okay? If you don't know what that's like, don't speak on it. And don't you ever be around somebody that's dealing with that and minimize it. Because if you do, man, that's a level of cruelty that you can't even begin to imagine, but it's absolutely the same thing as telling my brother-in-law what you need your wheelchair for and you standing there looking at him and he only got one leg it's the same thing and only he only my brother-in-law with one leg is one of the few people in this world right that knows me that gets that it's the same thing because he also has tbi terminal terminal brain injury okay and so if you're one of these people stop letting people bombard you with tv cell phone data uh um uh, social media, noise, music. You might love the music, but you don't feel like hearing it right now. You don't have to pretend just because you're around your friends and it's the coolest, hottest, latest song and everybody's grooving, but you're already at your edge of overload. You don't have to do that to yourself. Okay? Um, it's, it's a stewardship issue. You can keep going around crying because nobody gets you, beating yourself up because you're not handling situations right, upset because you melted down at work. You can keep on beating yourself up about that. You can keep running to the doctor, asking them for stronger and stronger drugs if you want to, okay? Or you can take responsibility for yourself and be a good steward of your own life and your own mind. Love on yourself enough to protect yourself. Make decisions on a daily basis that are conducive to you functioning at max capacity. That's a choice you have to make. And it's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be comfortable. Sometimes you're going to say, I don't want that to eat. And everybody going to look at you like you're stupid. Sometimes you're going to say, hey, can you turn the music down? And they're going to look at you like, ugh, you done got brand new. Sometimes you're going to put your headphones on because you don't want to be rude to everybody else. And then everybody going to treat you some kind of way because you're not engaged in whatever they're doing. All of this is going to happen to you because humans are insensitive. You cannot care. Because if they are really worthy of your time, they're going to pay attention to what you're doing. They're going to ask about it and they're going to be understanding about it. And if they don't, I don't care if it's a parent, significant other, friend, whatever. If they don't, make plans to do something different, okay? If you're one of the other kind of people who's never had to deal with this, same, same. This is why it's an Aspie secret. How about this one? If non-autistic people would stop consuming media content at such a high scale, drinking all the Kool-Aid, falling for every bit of propaganda, you wouldn't have a whole world full of autistic people begging all of the NTs to stop promoting Autism Speaks. The amount of non-autistic people that I know who think that they're doing something nice on Giving Tuesday or on, uh, like literally my autistic friends during like um, autism awareness, they don't go on the internet. I can't take it no more, they say because my whole news feed is gonna be bombarded with dumb shit about Autism Speaks and organizations that basically wanna medicate us and disappear us. 
and I just can't continue to try to educate. See, because they're growing. They're like, I can't keep beating people over the head and trying to educate everybody and trying to get everybody to think how I do. This is the autistic person. But for whatever reason, the non-autistic friends can't catch a clue and figure out that every single year around autism awareness time, your autistic friends disappear because they're sick of being bombarded with Autism Speaks information. And if you are paying attention more to the autistic adults in your life, it's mind blowing to me when a parent of an autistic child is all up in the parental autism communities, but as soon as an autistic adult starts talking, they don't wanna hear it. They get offended. Come on, man. That's a one plus one equals two that I just, mm, I just, mm. like, why would you not want to commune and engage with the people who have overcome the challenges that you're terrified that your child is going to have to go through? So you beating your child over the head, dumping all this shit on them. That's not even true. Telling them about all the stuff they're not going to be able to do and they're going to fail miserably at and all this. When the autistic people right over there, the adults can say, hey, no, this is what I found out. Oh, they can have a full life, but you just won't let them do it. What the hell? That's a choice to stay in the victim mentality, to stay around the people that are comfortable, stay with the people that are commiserating and crying with you and talking about how hard it is to be an autistic parent, rather than going towards the solution and going towards a potential that might actually help solve the issue. But you think that the issue can't be solved because you think your child is broken. <laughs> okay? I could go on all day about this. I could make, listen, when I have conversations with people about sugar and dairy, the conversations would not be so difficult if people didn't bombard themselves with propaganda. I sound like I'm lying because they haven't publicly made it common knowledge that sugar and dairy and gluten is the most basic number one cause of most all issues that people have now. They haven't made that common knowledge. It's plenty of scholars, trusted scholars, because I ain't no dummy. I'm a scholar. I'm a researcher, okay? I know how to get down to the bottom of some factual information. I know how to do scientific research. And I'm just enough of a weirdo where when I do research, I'm actually trying to prove my theory wrong instead of just finding some statistics to boost up what I already think I know. Imagine that as a concept, okay? But they absolutely are out here. And you can find plenty of them all the way up to the renowned who you don't even hear about anymore. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, whatever happened to him, he started talking about cannabis and sugar and he just disappeared. <laughs> okay. You won't see people in basic media talking about this. So when I talk to you, I sound like I'm lying and exaggerating. I don't have time to care about that. I don't have time to care about the fact that you want to watch all of the media propaganda instead of digging into some of the basic obvious truths that we've uncovered. I always give y'all the references and the links, but if you don't go choose to look them up, I'm not going to spend any time arguing with you about it because I know that you're drinking the Kool-Aid. You are bombarding yourself with propaganda and not just propaganda, but after you bombard yourself with the propaganda, then you go and reinforce the propaganda by listening to the podcasters that mm, sound like they get paid by the propagandists because they just get out here and argue, men and women, black and white, whatever, you know, religions and whatever, and they just arguing and, and, and hurling insults at each other and being mean and nasty and ain't helping no damn body and ain't getting no further to the truth. How is that fun? Even if it is fun for you, I submit <laughs> that you don't realize that that's why you don't have energy for all the rest of the people in your life, because you let these negative podcasters suck the life out of you. So when you go talk to your kids or your spouse or whoever, you know, who maybe um, you feel like they're not at the developmental level that you are and they're not doing what you feel like they need to be doing with their life and you just wish they would get it together, but you have less patience to love on them and to be the example and lead the way because you letting people who you think, right, are on the same page with you <laughs> stir up your spirit and cause angst and, and aggression inside of you. Even if you, you could tell me all day long that, oh, I can watch that. It don't bother me. You don't know. 
people who think that they can watch the news all day, every day, and watch horror films all the time, and, and then watch all the drama that's going on on TV, people who think that they can watch stuff like that all the time and it doesn't affect them, they don't know. They're immature. They're ignorant. They don't see themselves raging and have the knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom to tie their raging back to the food that they pour into their minds. So then they just keep going to the doctor, taking medication, and then they sit in front of the TV with the sensationalistic propaganda that's making their heart race while they take their medications. Food for thought. What is your food for thought? I want to hear from people who can tell me stuff they've given up. I want to hear about the stuff. I don't want to hear nobody come up here and beat everybody. I did enough beating everybody over the head. I said what I said. Nobody needs to add nothing to it. I made the point. This is what we talked about. If you want to come up here, I want you to be bold enough to tell us the example of what I'm saying that has to do with you. What did you have to give up because you, you realized that it was causing negative thoughts? What did you have to get rid of? Like we've talked about, um, let's see, when Sharente was up, up here the other day, we was talking about um, 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 the fluoride in the water. And y'all, I didn't even realize this, okay? Until y'all started talking about it on this app. I've been doing it for so long, it didn't even cross my mind. And I never talk about it. But I've been drinking alkaline water forever like since before alkaline water was a thing like when i started drinking alkaline water kangian was the only company i don't even have them i have a whole nother company but all these other companies were not out okay they didn't sell alkaline water in the store back then like they do now okay i've been drinking alkaline water forever and only in the past Five years, I guess it's five years when my grandmother passed away. Um, when I sold my house and I moved to Virginia, I helped take care of my grandmother on hospice. Um, and then I was living in Virginia up until like last year. We have one now. We have a water filter now. But only during that short period of time did I not have um, alkaline water. And for the most part, unless we're in a country with some spring water or something, we don't drink tap water. We don't do that. When I lived in Lovejoy, the tap water was good. They won, they won awards for their filtration system, but I still had alkaline water um, access then, okay? And I haven't had regular toothpaste since 2000, 20 years. I haven't had regular toothpaste. And back then, it wasn't because I wanted my pineal gland to not be calcified. It was because fluoride is poison, period. Like, we don't need fluoride. Like, you, it, it, no. They try to tell you that you need fluoride and you need calcium and all. Yeah, okay, well, when we were born, like, we breastfed or drunk some kind of milk or some kind of formula and whatever, and we developed and whatever. I'm well past the age of development. I don't need any of that stuff anymore. <laughs> don't let people tell you that. Okay. Tap water is not good for you. And there's no stretch of imagination that somebody can lie and tell you that tap water is good for you. There's like 150 million reasons why tap water is not good for you, besides the fluoride. And if you have a water filtration system on your sink or on your refrigerator that you drink water out of, and you do not have one on your shower or the other places in your house that water comes out of, guess what you're doing? wasting your money because your skin is the largest organ. Food for thought. What are we feeding our minds? What are we feeding our minds? If y'all haven't read the lung study, please go. Oh, la. nope. Just Google lung study. My link in bio, my link tree, it's sugar-free coach links, but on there it says living sugar-free affiliate links. And there's a wellness journey link on there. That's every time you hear me talking about a product, that's where it came from. Okay. I don't promote it. That's not what I'm here to do, but it's there if you want it. Okay. But there's a study called the lung study. It was a 30 year study that they did on the chemicals that most people use in their house. This study is like, mm, maybe 10 years old, maybe seven, eight years old. And then they just did another one in the past three years. So before a pandemic, before everybody started spraying bleach everywhere, and even as a joke on TikTok, when somebody coughed, they sprayed a Lysol in their face. Like, 
if our society was together the way that it's supposed to be, if our system wasn't so jacked up, somebody should be able to call the police on you for spraying bleach in their face. It's like pouring acid on somebody. It doesn't have as quick to, quick of an, you know, doesn't take as quick of an effect. But it's absolutely poison. And you shouldn't be spraying it in the vicinity where anybody is breathing. It's not funny. It's cruel. But, you know, that's that's the, the system that we live in. And that's the propaganda and trust and believe. Lysol Company, Bleach Company, and all these other companies, they're not going to let that go no time soon. They've been around too long. They are absolutely part of our system. They're part of our educational system. They're part of our sciences. Yeah. The Lysol and the Bleach Company are part of the fabric of this country. If you don't know that, go do some research. Okay? So do you think that they're going to anytime soon let go of them being the main household cleaners that everybody use? Y'all know it's people in this world that damn put bleach on their dishes. They feel like if they don't put some bleach on their dishes, they're not clean enough. There are people that feel like if they don't wash their chicken in like dishwashing liquid and stuff like that, it's not clean. That's poison. I had a talk with somebody on here about washing their meat in apple cider vinegar. You're drinking the vinegar. When you cook your food at that high temperature, like what exactly do you think is still going to be on there? Now, if you still got salmonella and whatever germs and whatever, you didn't cook your meat high enough, period. Or your kitchen is nasty <laughs> and you didn't wipe down your countertops. Or, hmm, this is a real common one I see people do. You making chicken, you cleaning the chicken, you doing all that kind of stuff, right? You gonna take your chickeny hands and go pull the um, seasonings out the cabinet and put your nasty chickeny hands on the seasonings and then go put them back in the cabinet? Are you gonna grab the knob on the sink and grab the nozzle and grab the dishwashing liquid bottle or the soap? You're gonna do all that with chicken on your hands and then not go and disinfect the whole area? That's how you get them kind of diseases. It's not from the meat, unless the meat is bad, okay? That's some slave mentality <laughs> that they got Southern black people and poor people so messed up that they think that they got so many germs and they're so dirty and unclean that they got to put um, dishwashing liquid in their chicken or bleach on their dishes. Like what, what is on me that's so disgusting that if I don't put bleach on my dishes, it's going to still be there the next time I eat. Come on, man. Dishwashing liquid is extra strong. Most dishwashing liquid that y'all buy, I don't buy that kind. But most of the kind y'all buy over the counter, you could buy, you could water it down and it would still be effective. And most people use it full strength. Why would you want to eat that? Why would you want to do that? Why would you want that to be in your food? And when I tell I shouldn't tell y'all this, but I am because I don't care. This conversation I had some time back was actually in my college group. And I got laughed out. Needless to say, I'm not in their groups anymore. And that's why I'm not in their groups. I don't care that y'all are the most quote unquote elite blacks in the country. I don't care. Y'all stupid. And, and perpetuating propaganda and tools of the system and agents. And I'm sorry to say for all y'all that went to HBCUs, I went to one of the most elite ones. But they are perpetuating propaganda and they're tools of the system. They're boarding. They're just like all of the native boarding schools. <laughs> They raising up an elite cadre of people that can go forward and carry out their mission with just enough of the truth for people to think that we're some kind of revolutionaries when in reality, they're not even telling the whole truth about stuff. How do you go to an HBCU like the one I went to with people from all over the world, with all walks of life, all kind of understanding of religion and philosophy and all this stuff, but y'all still telling the same hijacks as a collective? Something ain't right with that. And I already know what the something that ain't right is. I didn't have no broadcast journalism at my school. That's why I had to go to the army. How come they wouldn't let us be broadcast journalists? They don't want us in the media. Why are you raising the nation's quote unquote most elite black women, but you're not letting them be part of the media? Something ain't right. I'm gonna need for y'all to remember that it's all propaganda and that we are in a system. And remember the things that are designed to come against you, to throw you off, to redirect you and keep you from what you're supposed to be doing, what you know you're supposed to be doing, what you wanna be doing and stop taking it out on the people, right? The like minds, stop taking it out on them. It's not them, it's all of the other stuff going on in your life. 
just because you got on wisdom and had a conversation with somebody and they rubbed you the wrong way because they called out some shit that you needed to hear. That's not the person you have a problem with. The problem is with everything else in your life. It's time for us to get that shit in order because we can't continue. I refuse to be part of a community where we're standing over here acting like we're doing some elite shit and we're not really doing it. I will call you out if you want my friend. If you are my friend, if, if you're not really doing what we all claim to be doing, probably you don't want to be my friend. Okay. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but just kind of stay away from me because I'm going to call you out. I'm, this is the warning. I'm letting everybody know from now on, <laughs> I'm not glossing over any microaggressions. I'm not letting anybody come up on my stage and exercise their attitude and pour salt on my audience. I'm not. I'm not. Speak about your own experience, okay? Don't have no underhanded shit to say about nobody else on this app, okay? And if you're in your feelings, I'm going to call you out. Not to be mean, but out of love. Right? Me and Nancy had a, a conversation the other day, so let me clarify this. When I say get out of your feelings, yes, like we want to, like Trente says, we want to feel all the feelings. We want to feel all the feelings. But we don't want to live in them. You have every right to be mad. You have every right to be sad. You have every right to be frustrated, angry. Oh, I got this new app. I almost forgot to tell y'all about it. Hold on. Let me go look at it so I can tell y'all. If you are new to all of this feeling stuff, please download How We Feel. It is a brilliant little app that will make you catalog your feelings throughout the day and then allow you to look at your feelings over a period of time. So for women, for example, you start getting a little moody around a certain time of month, you're going to be able to see that. We don't all, by the way, men, we don't all get moody like that. But some do. And some people just get moody because they just in pain. Hello, somebody. But you can look at that if it happens for you regularly. You can see that on a chart. And then you don't have to have people saying shit about you that's not true. And you don't have to be lying on yourself and acting like you're not doing stuff that you do. This is the level of detail that we need to be willing to go to with this self-awareness, self-care, um, self-actualization thing. Because if not, we're full of shit. Period. Period. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. So that's all I have to say. If anybody wants to share an example, like what did you always watch on TV that you had to stop watching? What were you a part of? Y'all, we talked about the church until, until, you know, we beat that dead horse already. That would be an example, yes. But what have you been a part of in this world that you realized, okay, wait a minute. Y'all, <laughs> y'all are the ones who are reinforcing this thing that I'm trying to get rid of. I'm trying to get this thing up off of me and I can't seem to get it up off of me because every time I turn on the TV, I'm trying to give up dairy and sugar, but every time I turn on the TV, I see pizza. I'm trying to level up my life and, and improve my, my relationship and my marriage. I love my wife, but every time I get on the internet, I hear podcasts of men bashing women. I'm trying to be more accepting and open of people in color and people with different neurodiversities and people with, um, you know, people, you know, in the LGBTQ community. But every time I leave my house, I'm going back to hang around the same old biased good old boys. And when I get on the Internet, I'm still, you know, hanging around in the same old negative groups. Like, how exactly do you really think that you're going to shift your mind if everything that you're feeding it is support of the old stuff? How? Somebody argue with me, if anything. I mean, if, if y'all don't agree, if nobody don't have no examples, clearly maybe y'all disagree. Or am I just stepping on everybody's toes to the point where, ugh, I'm sorry, not really, but I am. I, I am. I love y'all. I do. I love y'all. And that's the only reason I'm saying this. It's the only reason I'm saying all of this. Okay? It's the only reason. It's because I love y'all. Check your feelings. Feel all of the feelings. When somebody piss you off, ah, ah, rage, ah, do all of that. Lean all the way into it. And then don't carry it into the next interaction. And certainly don't let a whole bunch of them build up to now where you just mad at the world. Or everybody that talks to you, you feel like they're putting you down. 
or you feel like nobody respects your knowledge or it's just all of this stuff. It's not true. None of it is true. It's not true that nobody likes you. It's not true that nobody respects you. It's not, you might've been hanging around with some people that treat you like that, but it's a big world. A big one. Y'all, California is the largest state by population. I don't know if y'all knew that or not. I didn't, okay? But I found it out because I Googled it because I needed to know. Because we came across some games the other day in the app store and were appalled and disgusted. One of them T found on his Android. I ain't even gonna tell y'all about it because we gonna show, but it's a hot mess. Okay, it is a game with some people running around with a plastic surgery enhancement, and that is the game. So you wonder why all these women feel like they need to go to the store and, and I mean, to the to the doctor and get this plastic surgery. It's thirty five million. No, I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. Fifty million people playing this game. That's. 20 million more people than live in California are playing this game. It's a silly little game, you know, where you drag the person along and they run and jump and knock obstacles over and all that. But they got this plastic surgery enhancement. And the more unhealthy stuff you knock over, the more your plastic surgery enhancement grows. And when you knock over vegetables, it gets smaller. But when you get to the brick wall, if you was eating vegetables the whole time, then you're going to run into the brick wall and die. If you eat all the unhealthy food, then you just get to run and crash right through the brick wall. What the hell is going on out here? That's a real game in the app store. Now, I saw on YouTube last night that they talking about kicking Twitter out of the app store because they not following the rules and they doing all that. But y'all let this shit go on now. That's why I don't trust them. Even the ones who stand up and say, oh, I'm so mad at this other celebrity or, oh, I'm so mad at this other politician because they're doing y'all wrong. They're full of shit, all of them. And we don't need to be getting caught up with them like that. Okay? Period. It's not that serious. They don't control our lives. They only control our lives to the extent that we're so consumed with them. And we do whatever they tell us to do. Whoever they tell us to be mad at, that's who we get mad at, right? But yeah, you gotta vote. That's your thing, you wanna vote? Great, go vote. Be educated, study, research, do whatever you wanna do, blah, 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 great. But do you have to spend like the whole six months before you vote stewing on that shit and talking about it and arguing about it on social media? No, you really don't. You really don't. You can just go read the information and you can watch, pay attention. Because nine out of 10 times when they first came out the gate saying whatever they say, if you watch long enough, <laughs> don't jump out there arguing with people day one because they're going to have you looking stupid. Because then they're going to get caught up in some kind of scandal and not even be the person that you thought they were. Like, how do you think that Jeffrey Epstein and whoever else, Giselle, whatever the hell her name is, and these people, I don't know about y'all, but I never heard of that man before he got in trouble. He's not a household name. So how could somebody be trafficking humans all over the world without a significant amount of help from the powers that be? Like, you can't transport humans in shipping containers. They would die. Somebody would have to open up the shipping container and feed the people. What about the women? These are women of childbearing ages. Why? Because they selling them off to be people's wives and concubines. What they do with them? They just, what? How they do that? You got shipping companies. You got train companies. You got plane companies. You got all these industries that do all these shippings. Okay? And I'm here to tell you, there's no way in hell that anybody could be shipping humans across seas without somebody being okay with it. You gotta go through customs, what's in the box? Hmm? How come customs don't never ask you what's in your box? How do you keep bringing these shipping containers through? They checking all the boxes, but they don't ever check yours. How is that possible? 
It's not. They full of shit. Okay? So I can't waste any amount of time on the internet arguing with people who don't know that. I can't. We caught up and we wasting our time arguing about petty shit to make ourselves feel better or to make our make us to feel like we're relevant or because we can't stand to listen to our own thoughts and just being quiet. And it's time out for that. So go back on social media, wherever you are, wherever your brand is. Like some of y'all have amazing brands and I'm trying to help boost your brand up around the internet and I can't because I can't find you. Why are you hiding? You don't have to hide from nobody. And I had to tell somebody just the other day, if you're one of them people who thinks that like because of the kind of stuff that we talk about, that the men in the black suits are going to be at your door, they are not. They're not coming for you. They're not coming for you. You're not that much of a threat. I've been doing what I do for 15 years, and I don't never bite my tongue, ever, period. I might make it a little graceful sometimes, but I don't gloss over the truth. Been talking about Monsanto. Been talking about cannabis. Been talking about sugar and dairy. Been talking about indigenous peoples and the lies that were told. And trust me when I say, as the first female voice of the 3rd United States Infantry, who left the military on a honorable under general um, discharge because they didn't like what I did. If anybody is a threat, I am. They tried to erase me out of history and I wouldn't let them. I came around the backside and tricked them where they didn't have a choice in the matter. And now I'm all over their Facebook page and the military district of Washington. You think if they wanted to disappear somebody, they wouldn't have did it to me a long time ago? They're not coming to your house. So stop hiding. Okay? You don't have to hide. You don't have to walk in fear. Even though everything I'm saying is true, it's not that serious, y'all. The government is not sitting around looking to come get us because we're having these conversations. I know they're not coming to get me because I'm the voice of reason. I'm going to be the one telling the two sides, y'all look stupid, stop fighting. Y'all both wrong. I'm not stirring people up to riot. And if you are, you might want to rethink some things. Because who is that helping? Food for thought. I dare say to people that are angry all the time, whatever your anger is, I'm not saying it's not justified. If you're a black woman, your anger is very justified. If you black, period, your anger is justified. If you're a Latina, Hispanic, your anger is real justified. But don't forget that, you know, it's some people that was, <laughs> never mind. Um, yeah. Indigenous peoples, LGBTQ peoples, Disabled, yeah, your anger is justified. But who wants to walk around angry all the time? I don't. And I know you don't either. Because, you know, when we're walking around angry and mad and survival and all that, we can't heal. So whatever ailments you have and issues you have, you're exacerbating them. You're making the doctors have to work extra hard. You're eating yourself out of your misery. And you're engaging in conversations that you don't have no business being in. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live like that. Because then they win. I would like to walk in joy and peace and love and harmony, right? I finally figured out the only way that I could do that is by literally being in the world but not of it. Like they threw that around so much in church, but they don't really teach you what that means. What they t When they tell you it means is, oh, don't go to the club and don't sin. <laughs> but they don't tell you that it means don't bombard yourself with the toxicity of the world. Even at church, y'all, even at church, after Sunday service, people sit around and the circle of women, hens, get to gossiping. That grieves my spirit. I don't like that shit. And if y'all don't want me up in here telling all of y'all that you're going to the hell that you believe in, I probably shouldn't be in here when that's going on. I have to control that. I have to maintain that. Just because they're gossiping and they're wrong for gossiping, it doesn't mean that I just get to go there every single Sunday and tell them off about gossiping because I'm so self-righteous. That's not how we do this. Oh, and furthermore, by me setting myself up to have to be their morality police, I'm causing myself extra work and stress. And ain't nobody got time for that. Food for thought. We have to take inventory of the food that we are feeding our minds. Otherwise, everything that we're doing and everything we talk about is futile. 
All right. I'm going to get out of here. I would love for a couple of people to come up here and share because I know they got some amazing examples and experiences of what we're talking about, but I don't want to put nobody on the spot. But you know who you are. <laughs> wow. Thank y'all for being here. Hey, everybody. Shout out. Hey, y'all. Thanks for joining me. Lovely to see all of you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Always great to hang out with y'all. Hey. That's so, oh, y'all are so awesome. Thank you so much for stopping through or for staying the whole time, whichever one you got to do. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, we'll be back this afternoon <clears throat> for the Living Sugar Free Lifestyle show. It's a whole different direction when we do that show. Um, and that one is also going to be shifted. Don't forget the week of the 12th, we're going to do an interview <clears throat> on Monday with Dr. Crystal Lee Crane. Um, and she is, oh my God, so amazing. I think y'all probably already heard the interview that I did on her podcast, Transformation Network. I told y'all about that a few weeks back. But we have a special treat for y'all because then on Friday, we're going to move that 420 show to that Friday on the 15th. And we're going to have a spoken word night. Oh my gosh. And I've heard one of the poems. Trust me when I say y'all don't want to miss it. And be sure to follow her as well. You can find her, um, her name on here. Um, she just joined us. Please do follow her. Give her a big warm welcome. If she pops up on your stage, oh my gosh, it will be your treat for sure. She is just such a joy. Um, Crystal Lee. Okay, I'm going to try to spell it right. C R Y S T. A-L-E-E. -E. That's the first name. And the last name is Crane. C-R-A-I-N. Go follow her. Um, she just joined us. And um, so she's going to be on that week. And um, I got some more little surprises, little tricks up my sleeve I'm going to be sharing with y'all um, to try to, you know, shake things up a little bit, have a little bit of fun. Um, and, you know, I'm always trying to share with people ideas of the ways that we can do these things because it's not like there's not just one way to do it. You know, we can piece together other types of technology and provide a, a multimedia experience and um, go deeper in different ways. And so we'll be doing some different things. If you're not following me everywhere, I'm at Sugar Free Coach. Hashtag living sugar free. I will follow you back. Just tell me, you know, that you're you. Um, we do have a subscription. Uh, you can become a living sugar free sweetheart. Really a lot of different places. You can do it on TikTok and Patreon and Anchor, but you can also just do it on my website. If you do it on my website, you don't have to worry about, you know, the glitches. Um, but you absolutely can do it on any one of these apps that you might frequent where I have a subscription program. I don't have it on Instagram yet, but I do have it on um, TikTok. And um, yeah, so we're going to be doing some little... We're going to try to do the featured um, um, perks, like off, like not just on the apps, because, you know, then the Patreon subscribers can't necessarily do the private chat on TikTok. So we're doing a lot more stuff like um, the, um, the live, the super live that we did the other day. That will be a space where we can do uh, subscription only, living sugar free sweetheart talks. We can go a little bit more deep, you know, because it's a smaller group. And people can be more free and comfortable. That is a video chat format. You can't come up. We're also going to be doing um, panel discussions where the subscribers get to pick topics. Okay. Um, and more. There's a group on Facebook. And we're going to do a t-shirt. And there's a magazine as well. So check that out. Check out my link in bio. Follow me everywhere. Check out the podcast and all that good stuff. And shout me out. Send me a note engage let me know you enjoyed or if you had any thoughts or questions and you can also click the um ask me a question button and get an audio answer here on wisdom thanks again for joining me you've been listening to andrea in the morning grand rising food for thought hope you all enjoyed it and i hope everybody got something out of it i look forward to talking to you all again later have a great day This is Andrew S. Baker from Brainwave Consulting Company, and you're listening to the Living Sugar-Free Lifestyle Show with Andrea in the morning. For the Coletto people on my men's on the men's side, you know what I'm saying? Wow! Yeah! Wow!
congratulations and kudos to you for that. I'm still in Cecilia Grace's words, kudos. She got me on this kudos thing lately. But <laughs> I mean, we cannot forget to celebrate, you know, our victories and milestones. I'm following you everywhere right now, by the way, Brian. Um, so you, your phone's probably dinging. <laughs> um, but wow, uh, thank you for sharing that with us. I love it. I love when people come up here and tell their other story, their their own stories about this. And um, so how has it affected your mental? Um, well, it's definitely helped me feel um, more good. Like I have more energy. Um, I mean, there, there was other non-nutrition um, fitness related work that had to happen for me to uh, really start to see fruition uh, in my life. Um, I, um, I'm, I'm a man with uh, autism and uh, I didn't always have the uh, abundance community that I've got now. Um, but I, I, um, I had to make some decisions that uh, were essentially going outside of the box of what I knew um, at home as a kid and, uh, and start to um, build my own communities mm -hmm. with some, with some ch a few uh, challenges along the way. Uh, but uh, mostly a lot of good times and uh, lots of growth um, as a man who uh, likes to share and um, you know advocate not just for myself but for other people on the spectrum as well and mm -hmm. um, yeah mm -hmm. I'm so thankful that you came up here Brian and I'm honored to meet a fellow autistic wisdom or we're gonna have to come up with some cute little quirky phrase for all of the neurodivergent we don't have to do we don't have to come up with something cute and a quick way to say like wisdomers autistic wisdomers or something that, that's gonna be cute we got to come up with something but I'm honored to meet you and I appreciate you coming up here and <laughs> Being the example, being an influencer, it's so easy to get caught up in our own problems and issues and our own pain and forget that there are other people who, even though we have a hard time sometimes, there are other people who aren't even as strong as we are, you know, and by us being willing to just kind of, like you said, share and talk about our experiences, it might just alleviate a little bit of pressure for somebody else coming behind us. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for that. Yeah, of course. Uh, and I know you were talking with uh, Jillian a few minutes ago about um, your other experiences like Clubhouse and um, Clubhouse was uh, is the platform that essentially got me comfortable with um, uh, doing videos as posts on my socials because uh, prior to the Clubhouse craze that I got involved in last year, I um, did not think that uh, doing reels would be for me. And... Uh, then I started participating in spaces that talked about that, but I was really just looking to uh, 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 make myself known and connect with people who became well known on the app. But, uh, but I gained so much more from doing that. And uh, it was the evolution that I needed because what I was doing before was starting to not work. Um, and uh, and it was a different way to uh, get my uh, uh, message out there. Mm -hmm. 
That's cool. The evolution of uh, the different technologies and forms of broadcasting and how one can kind of open the door for another and make you feel comfortable. Um, I love the what I call them the talkie apps. I love the what you know, re- it's like more like old school radio for me. Um, and, and, and I have to kind of drag myself sometimes to do video because sometimes I just don't feel like it. And we, you know, everybody is not the same. Do you know what I mean? And I think that giving ourselves the freedom to just be who we are, and even if we are trying to develop a new skill or broaden our horizons or be courageous and break out, whatever, we still have to give ourselves like permission, right? And and be gentle with ourselves, I think. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I, I wanna commend you though, because um, I'm looking at your social media <laughs> and um, you, you, you're doing a lot. I mean, not only, you know, did you come through the experiences um, that you came through, but I can really, really see, you know, the, like, like all of the experiences that we go through, right? We say, okay, yeah, we went through some challenges and tough, but it was all like um, learning. Right. And so really the wisdom is all about like, what did you learn from it? You know? And so that's the, that's kind of like the yumminess of the things that we share and really you guys with influence period, it's, it's kind of being willing to go back and share the things that you've learned. That's it, it could be like, you know, h- how to write a book to how to fix your garbage disposal right? Just sharing with people the experiences that you've been through and what you've learned. Um, It just, like Hakeem was saying earlier, it just is a natural way to build um, an influence brand, a personal influencer brand, or a a solopreneur, whatever you want to call it. It's a lot of different words, depending on what you do that we can put on this. But just doing you and living your life and being willing to share of those lessons and experiences with others is a real simple way to to build a brand. And it's a real simple way to not have to figure out how to be more authentic. You just are. So, yeah. I appreciate you coming up here and sharing another example of what that looks like. And it is very nice to meet you. Yeah, very very nice to meet you too, Andrea. Um, And uh, I I, I feel blessed to uh, uh, be a a further voice for the community. and, um, And I was just looking at your website too, uh, you might actually be uh, very beneficial for me too uh, with um, my um, desires to be on stages speaking and to go uh, all around the country to meet all my uh, social audio friends. Um, What? I'd be honored. Come on, man. Okay, check this out. Are you on Facebook? Yes. Okay, Um, click on my link, my link, or, you know, you can do it from my website up at the top or all the social stuff. Click on Facebook, follow me on my page, I'll add you, and we have a neurodivergent group on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, Yeah. so you, like, mi casa es su casa, okay? Jillian, just like I said, when I say I'm going to invite you to an affinity group that is in line with what you've told me your interests are and what you want to do. Basically, I'm giving you a stage. (laughs) I'm giving you a captive audience of people that are interested in what it is that you want to talk about, that you can post and talk to people, ask questions if you want to ask questions, run stuff by people, say, hey, how do you like this video? How do you like this talk, et cetera. And, And out of that, you never know what happens. Sometimes people build bonds, build relationships, make deals, do stuff together somebody else you know might invite you to talk just from being you know so this is kind of the way that we actively now put action to these visions and then we don't have to like chase it or fight or drag or anything we just have to be in position and be in the flow and let it manifest absolutely Mm -hmm. yeah and um i um i had um by the way I was doing some shows here on Wisdom 
um, in the past. Um, I have largely not been doing my shows on here as I've been, I took them to another app called Fireside where I uh, show up on video to do my show. I and think it was a Hakeem, I think, told me about that one. I have heard about that one. I'm not on there yet, but I'm familiar with it. Okay, well, no no pressure. Uh, you know, you have to do what's best for you. Um, but um, I, um, I, I still have love for the wisdom community. I... I'm not the best at putting together long forms of content and speaking for long periods of time uh, when it comes to doing um, a podcast show. Mm -hmm. And I also have trouble keeping people's attention, which is why uh, uh, the videos that I do are are all like short form stuff. Mm, That's smart. Um, That's smart. That's very smart of you. Well, here's an idea. I did this one time because guess what? I don't always feel like it either. And (laughs) you said I have a hard time keeping people's attention. You would be surprised in my lifetime. People always say, oh my gosh, Andrea, you're so passionate. It's so exciting. But you would be surprised at the people that think I'm monotone and boring. So I get it. I get what you're saying. And and for those of y'all who didn't know, people on the spectrum, autistic people tend to have a kind of a a uh, monotone kind of vanilla kind of way of talking. And some people don't have the patience for that and whatever. I don't care. Um, but um, what I was going to say is um, I've done podcasts and you, and you might think about this too, um, where like, okay, so, and this can look any kind of way y'all, um, but let's just say you go on Twitch or Facebook and they have this um, streaming thing. You got to do so many hours and so much time to be able to build it up and qualify and blah, blah, blah. Well, what you can do is you can take all of your short form stuff and string it together. You can take an old podcast, you guys, and replay it on a new podcast. You can go live and like you can't stream somebody else's music. You can't stream somebody else's podcast. But I absolutely might come on here one day and don't talk and just stream one of my podcasts live because I feel like it's relevant and people need to hear it. I also have a lot of those little short snippet. Back in the day, when I would do my podcast, I would get on and just do a little 10 or 15 minute thing. You can do that if you want to. Nobody, like a lot of the stuff we're doing, nobody's ever done it before. So who's going to tell us how we have to do it? Right. It's whatever we say. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Whatever it is, if you got questions, ask them. If I can point you in a direction, if I can refer you to somebody, you know, and I'll be happy to be on that journey with you. Yeah. um, Yeah, I've never um, repurposed any of my wisdom stuff for any platform. Um, And I've also uh, never been able to stream Fireside to my YouTube channel. Um, like I've wanted to as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, that, that monotone way of, yeah, I, I mean, luckily most people get me, Mm -hmm. but, uh, there, there are times where it does get frustrating, especially if I'm like waiting long periods of time or I keep getting interrupted. Um, and, uh, sometimes home can be frustrating. I, I live with my parents i'm 33 i have a day job working for a nonprofit uh, vocational rehabilitation agency um it, which is like right close to my home here in mm. new jersey cool and uh and uh, i also uh i i shouldn't talk about this so openly but i do also get ssi which is has been good, but I don't want to rely on that forever. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So they kind of don't want us to be great. I get what you're saying about that. <laughs> they they want they want us to stay within certain confines, or else they're not willing to help. I feel you on that. Yeah, yeah, and and when I had that put in place uh, nine years ago, uh, it was. 
during a time it was before community and networking really became a thing for me. Mm -hmm. So, so we didn't really know uh, what was going to happen and how many people I was truly going to be able to meet. Um, and, uh, you know, now I can sort of smell it and know that um, some opportunities uh, can be coming uh, mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. um, Yay, I'm excited for you. I'm very excited for you. I can smell it too. <laughs> it's time. It's for such a time as now, you know. So, you know, yeah, let's let's um let's definitely touch base. I'll tell you like I told Jillian, if you don't follow up with me, I'm gonna be looking for you. So um don't don't make me have to think up if you oh my gosh, whatever happened to send me a message and follow up and let me know what questions you have and you know, like what what I can do for you. Like uh, let's do it now before life gets in the way and you know, all that kind of stuff, okay? Yeah, and are you from the South? Do I sound like I'm from the South? Wait, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I was born in Germany and my parents, my dad was in the military, so we lived all over the United States. But mostly I grew up in California and Texas. And then I, my family is all from Virginia but I only lived there like when I was growing up for a few years. Um, and then um, after Texas, I went to college in Georgia. And then I went into the military and that's when I started doing broadcasting. So I used to have more of a thick Texas drawl and a kind of a California Valley girl kind of way of talking. And when I went into broadcasting, they were like, yeah, no, you can't, mm -mm. I'm gonna need for you to, <laughs> you can't do that. We need, we, you know, they made me kind of make my speech a little bit more generic. And when I got out and I started my business and doing work from home, like um, phone call stuff and consulting and talking to people on the phone, people like literally would hang up in my face sometimes because I sounded like a recording or they would do the whole, is this a person? You're not real. And that kind of stuff. And I consciously made it a point to pay attention to myself and the way I was talking and be more open to relaxing my speech and using more colloquialisms and letting my drawl come back a little bit more. <laughs> I did it on purpose because I was like, yeah, no, that that's not how I talk. Like this is this is how I talk. I might throw a curse word in there sometimes. I might run some of the words together sometimes, or it might sound real country sometimes, or I might talk real fast, or I might be like, oh my God, you know, or whatever. That's how I talk, you know. So I had to get myself back together. <laughs> so I'm glad that I sound like I'm from the South to somebody who's in New Jersey. That means I, I'm sounding like me. <laughs> People from the South usually think I'm from the North and people from the North usually think I'm from the South. It's um. funny. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, but thanks for hanging out with me. It was really nice to meet you, Brian. And you are welcome on my stage anytime. I'm going to be looking for you on Facebook. Okay. So don't forget me. I will not forget you. All righty. I know that you're going to love being a part of our um, neuro neurodivergent group. And I know that your energy is going to just add just mm, so much awesomeness to the group. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm so excited, y'all, because it's like in the past few days, this is like the third conversation. I think I had a conversation with Cicely about something like this, then Jillian, and now you. And it's like over the past few months that I've been meeting you guys, I have been in the back of my mind consciously, right, not worrying about my nonprofit, consciously not trying to drag anybody over there doing anything or not, you know, because I'm supposed to be taking my hands off of it. And so it's really exciting for me to, you know, be able to connect the dots for some people. I'm excited about that. I get excited. I'm excited that um, some of the people from TXNL are on this app now, and I'm excited that you know, I'm connecting the dots because, you know, um, I appreciate what Brian said. I love that. Like, I don't believe much as I love this app and as much as I love Dio, I don't believe that we should ever cover up our businesses and our brands with somebody else's brand, right? 
it's a tool. And even if you become a partner, even if we become friends, my brand is still my brand and your brand is still your brand. Right. So I'm not going to erase my brand and gloss over my brand with your brand. And I don't want you to erase your brand. Like I might invite you to be a part of TXNL. That does not mean that TXNL becomes your thing. TXNL is not my thing. That's the nonprofit we all beca- we're all a part of. It's our thing, right? So with these apps, certainly with Facebook and Instagram and all these others that we don't even know the people, couldn't call their names or they don't care nothing about us, but also too, even with this one, let's not be so married to the technology or to the influence or to what it looks like that we're sabotaging our own brands because we feel like, oh, I have to be over here all the time because if not, if I'm not over here, people will be mad at me. And that's not the one that's most conducive to your brand. You got to work it out how you work it out. Okay. What's going on, brother? Hey, I didn't even, <laughs> how you doing? Good. Uh, how are I hear, you? Uh, excellent. I hear some, some great exchanges up here, which is all that we can ask for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of great ideas, and sometimes, you know, I, I I always ponder why it is that I think I'm always doing it wrong, and you know, <laughs> you just said something, <laughs> you know, that uh, was interesting. That you know, no one is doing. Now, you know, no one is doing what we're doing now. It hasn't been done before. So we say how it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, that's interesting, too, because the interesting thing about some of the stuff that hasn't been done before simply because it hasn't been done uh, in concert with each other simultaneously. There's a lot of things that I uh, overlap and link into each other that it hasn't been done that way before but just mm-hmm. because I see the flow through because I'm just using it again. I'm, I, 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 uh, want to continue to emphasize to people that one of the most powerful pieces of code is the hyperlink. Say it again. The, the most thing, what? The most powerful piece of code is the hyperlink. Yes. You, you can build anything <laughs> with hyperlinks. It's just, you just touch the screen and it takes you somewhere else. That's, that's it. That's how you construct it. And it just takes you to somewhere else that's a designated address that has a document. I mean, and then you build from there, right? You can build uh, after the text is, you know, images and then video, you know, audio, video. But, you know, I'm a little annoyed right now that <laughs> some, you know what happened? Um, I said something about some technology <laughs> and right after that, after their shield that they sent after me, I uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't knock me off of what I was saying. They attacked my website. What? It's, <laughs> it's hilarious. It's, it's kind of awesome. actually. I'm yeah. really happy with that. Uh, yeah. I like when I yeah, strike it. Sorry. I really like the outcome. It's um, it's pretty interesting, um, and <laughs> because because I I I just um I find it just hilarious because it's it's so stupid. It's like um uh it means that there's more to come. I have to watch, <laughs> you know, but it's great. Well. And I could be totally paranoid too, but and, and just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you. Period. Say, hmm. But but there, but you know when a sequence of events happens, and you know of course it's going to be said. Well, people see patterns. Yes, I see patterns. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I maintain. I maintain. I'm always going to refer people back to Malcolm Gladwell's Blink. Mm, always. Okay. Because nine out of 10 times, your first instinct is right. Mm. 90, actually, wow. let me not even say nine out of 10 times. Let me say 99.999% of the time, 
your first first instinct is right. Listen, we're not on a public platform. We're not on a general platform. I'm not talking to the masses right. on wisdom. <clears throat> So I can yeah. safely say to my wisdom audience that 99.999% of the time, at a percent of the time, your first instinct. I'm not talking about trauma response. I'm not talking about being tired and busy and caught up where you just react. I mean your true instinct, right? Not, it's almost always right. But we usually gloss over the instinct and talk ourselves out of it. Oh, you ain't all that. Ain't nobody paying attention to you like that. You paranoid, you know, et, cetera, et cetera. I'm I'm really glad that uh, Curtis J, who's in the the, the image here, uh, on wisdom, who's a wis fellow wisdomer, came down from Pennsylvania to visit me, and he's a, he's a joy to be around. He's a sweetheart of a person. <laughs> he's one of the most gentle beings, and he just wants to play music all the time and sing. That's all he wants to do is play his, his singing bowls and play whatever instrument. He just bought an ocarina because I have two of them. <laughs> mm. He just ordered one so that when he gets back home to Pennsylvania. So it's just, just that kind of thing that's just amazing. Um, but also on, the, <laughs> on another edge to that, what's really interesting about it is that very uh, right before – maybe a week before he decided to come down here, before he got here, maybe a week, two weeks, I got, I asked for and got uh, released a beta feature for call-in app, which is video. And, you know, a lot of people talk about stuff that they're doing. And, you know, there's there was some chatter like, oh, he's not doing this. He's just talking the, about the martial arts and the this and the that. But, you know, and people can make some good productions with some, with the sounds of the bar and some music in the background on audio. But as soon as that video went live, man, all of a sudden, the haterade was drunk. <laughs> and it was spiked. <laughs> <laughs> Hakeem. They were acting a fool. <laughs> Hakeem, what does it mean? Oh, okay, okay. So when you're looking at the listeners, and their mm -hmm. pictures have little um, icons outside of the circle. I guess that's the applause. Um, what is that? What are you using? What, what kind of device are you using? I'm on an um, iPhone. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you see something floating up from the bottom, <laughs> there's people giving different kinds of emojis or whatever. I don't. I have a Android, so I don't see okay, that. Well, I witnessed right. it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, but you do have this feature. Okay, so wait. Maybe you don't have this feature. So, okay, so we know when people are clapping, the claps yeah. fly up on the screen, right? But I, right. Uh, yeah, now, I don't see those either. Uh -huh. But well, okay, so I can see those. But right now, I'm looking at you know y'all how you look at the the listeners to see who's listening, right? I'm looking at the list of listeners, and some people have, y'all know I'm half blind, but it looks like the little, I think it is, some people's, it's a clap emoji, some people, it's a light bulb, and some people, it's a smiley face. And I know it's not part of their profile picture, because it's kind of like up above, you know how our badges, our um, top mentor badges are like kind of halfway on the photo and halfway off. So, you know, it's not part of the picture. This is like that. The little emoji is like halfway on the picture and halfway off. So it, it's definitely not in the pictures, but th I, I think this is new, y'all. It might be a new feature. Is it showing me who has given applause? Anyway, thank y'all for the applause. How about that? If that's what that means. Thank y'all for engaging. And um, I do have another guest coming. So, Hakeem, I want to shut up and give you the last moment to wrap it up before you get <laughs> dropped down. Oh, no. There's so much more. <laughs> I have lots of creativity to share. So, we I'll so jump much. down here. We got so much. Woo, I'm going to yes. call you and talk your head off one day this week. All right. <laughs> so much we got to go over got together. You. Okay. <laughs> Have a great night. Love you, brother. This is Denise Geritano from SD Management and Consulting. You're listening to the Living Sugar Free Lifestyle Show with Andrea in the morning.
Okay, we got the fake imposter. Hey, come on up. Happy hump day. Happy Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us as we share about clout and influence. What you got for it? Oh my goodness. So I gotta be honest, I've been listening for a long time. I got in the car, I picked up the wife, I'm driving back, and it's like I went to a, a stand-up comic show. And I don't mean it's funny, it's like, oh, I gotta remember that joke to tell somebody. And then another joke comes and another joke comes and then you finally get to your people, you're like, he had so many good jokes or she had so many good jokes, I can't remember them. You Shut talked about up. so, so much honored. since wow. I started. I'm like, wow, man, that's just it's just jam packed. And uh, the first thing I want to say is a shameless plug. If if you aren't following me, I want you to go right now, hit the list of people, and follow Jillian. Because if you're not following me, that means you have room for Jillian. She is amazing. I could just, I could listen to her read the phone book. Well, um, I agree, and I'm on. A, you're late because I'm already. Everybody else, y'all make sure right. follow both of them, okay? And yeah. It's nice to meet you, and I am absolutely following you now. Yes, indeed. So, what you were talking about earlier, I mean, and again, it was jam packed. I was talking to someone one time, and. Uh, as many people know that have listened to me, I live in Colorado Springs, huge military town, um, Air Force all around us, a huge army installation. And we got into talking, oh, USAA is right across the street from me. Not that that matters, but I mean, it's it's very pro-military here. Yeah, it, that tells me a lot, actually, you saying that. I, I get it, yes. Yeah, and, and I'm from a proud... I always love it when people say I'm from a proud military background. Mm -hmm. Like nobody's ever said, you know, I'm from a military family, but you know, we're not very proud of it. Yeah, you know, I'm from a shame. I'm from a yeah. shameful military. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like when a woman says, Oh, I'm married. And a guy says, I'm happily married. <laughs> well, why you got to add the happily? Are you try <laughs> you trying to convince me or are you trying For to yourself. convince yourself, <laughs> you know? Right. But but yeah, Jilly and I have had a number of conversations on a myriad of topics. And, you know, there's this, it's gotten overused and it's, and it's um, the saying, I'm sorry you feel that way. You know, when we, oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. That's not a real apology. Hmm. And it's just become overused. And I think it's the same with, thank you for your service, you know, and so whenever I meet someone and shake their hand, I just always say, never forget, mm. you know, because everybody says it's a standard, you know, or, mm -hmm. or what's the other one? Like, uh, they say it on, on law and order all the time. Uh, sorry for your loss. Oh yeah. 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 You yeah. know? And so, and so that's what I always say. And I got to tell you, and prayers are with you. Yes. Thoughts and prayers. Oh my goodness. But how and, about this? Let's just take it to the basic one of how are you doing? Oh, yeah. I talked about that the other night. If someone said, how are you doing? And I stopped and gave you a five minute dissertation. <laughs> you would be like, listen, I say, how are you doing? You say fine. You say, how are you doing? Yes. I say fine. And we go yes. about our day. Listen, listen, I bet you everybody on the spectrum can tell you about the day when they realize that how you doing wasn't a real question. Yeah. I mean, someone would probably pull me to the side and say, Hey man, do you not know how this works? Like, right. is right. this the first time you talk to anybody? You see the look on T's face right now. He's looking yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, like, hey, have you ever interacted with people before? Mm -hmm. But you guys were talking about about the military, and I and I've gotten to know Jillian a little bit, and uh, so my car's in the shop, and I promise this is going somewhere. I have a Jeep. Not only is it a Jeep, it's lifted, whatever that means. It's got Woo! big giant, big giant yeah, tires on it. I'm a Jeep girl. You know? You're about to get me excited. <laughs> I'm not a car guy, but I borrowed his Jeep. It's got big giant tires on it. It's all black. It's four doors. 
all the windows are tinted and it's the call of duty edition yes i'm not even saying he put stickers on i'm like ford explorer and the expedition had an eddie bauer version i remember yes this the call of duty version yes so i am badass when i'm inside that thing. when i get out of it everybody looks at me like that's ridiculous that <laughs> is that guy is ridiculous you know and so really when you guys were talking about fighting and, and i don't mean fighting like starting or instigated i'm talking about finishing it yeah finishing yeah. it and i remember I was listening to man. I want to think it was, or I want to say it was Jim Rome. He had this. I love this him. By the way. One of my yeah. favorites. He had this gentleman on who wrote a book. He was I can't remember if he's Navy SEAL, Special Forces, or one of those forces that they don't tell you about exists. You right. Know, nudge, nudge, <laughs> wink, right. wink. Yeah. <laughs> and Jim Rome asked him, "So what happens when you're out with your wife, and you know, some guy starts messing with you, and you get in a fight?" And I remember his answer. And I wish I could say something like this and just have that badass moment. You know, I can say it, I just can't back it up. <laughs> but he told Jim Jim Rome, and I quote, I don't get in fights, I end threats. And I was like, man, that is badass. Rarely ever do we start them. Rarely. You know? I'll be like, I don't get in fights, I make jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and curl up in a ball in the corner. <laughs> you know, and so I just wish I could have a moment like that where, you know, I'm like I'm like John Wick and uh, uh <laughs> you know, Jason Bourne had a baby and then that baby joined the gang. <laughs> okay, but, you know, listening to all that stuff and I was just like, Man, oh man, you know, my dad, proud member of, of the Air Force and I remember talking to him and said, hey, I think about joining the Air Force. He goes, no, don't do it. They won't treat you like they treated me. You know, my, my dad's a Vietnam uh, era service member. And I was like, damn, you went to Vietnam and you don't want me to join because they're not going to treat me like they did you. <laughs> my daddy didn't want me to join either. Mm -hmm. He tried everything to talk me out of it. I didn't listen. Oh, see, you, you and your dad had a different conversation than me and my dad. You know, my dad, my dad was like, was you shouldn't join. I was like, twice. okay, I won't join. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't listen. Yeah, I didn't listen. But we but. had this, we had this debate here in the Springs and they listed, this is a number of years ago when the, the third ACR was here, the, the Armored Cavalry Regiment. And I think three or four guys um, were on deployment and they were killed. And someone just said to me, man, those guys, those guys are heroes. Those those servicemen and women are heroes. And I said, I agree, but with a caveat. And he was like, so you think they died and they're not heroes? I said, no, you're not listening. And I want you to hear me specifically. I'm not saying this to you, I'm saying it to him. Mm -hmm. I want you to hear me loud and clear. You know, I've been to these uh, graduations, these boot camp graduations. You know, I've seen the the rank and file. I lived in DC. I've seen the eighth and I Marines. And if you're a clerical person, like you said, you're an infantry person, if whatever you're doing, I've never seen anybody out there with a keyboard or run, you know, some people got a rifle, this guy's got a typewriter, this guy's holding his comm system. And my point in saying all this is. I don't think you become a hero if you are killed. A hundred percent agree. I don't think you are a hero if you get deployed. Yes. I think you are a hero, no matter what your job is in the military. Yes. The minute you sign your name on that dotted line to say, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be part of America. I'm gonna be part of protecting our country. That's when you're the hero. I agree a hundred percent. I had a conversation on here one day with, um, we were, oh, it was Veterans Day, and uh, some kind of way it always evolves. And I got to talking to somebody that um, didn't get to get past boot camp because they got hurt. I was like, you're still a veteran. You signed up to serve. It's not your fault that something happened. It still counts. Yeah, exactly. Period. 
Like, I don't let nobody talk you off of that. I don't care. I'm very, very uh, strong about that. And when I do say thanks for your service to people, I say thank you to the people in garrison as well as the people in infantry, as well as the family members. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Because guess what? I had PTSD long before I ever went in the military. I was a veteran long before I ever went in the military. So, and you come back because I, I got some questions for you and I want to get to know you a little bit more. Thank you so very much, uh, the fake imposter. Um, I, first of all, I love, 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 love comedy. Stand up is my jam. So, <laughs> right on. When you first came up here, your metaphor, like, okay, yeah, you all, you always wish you could be the John Wick. I have all kinds of like um, fantasies about doing stand up. And I actually did open mic night um, after hours. You know, it wasn't the regular audience, it wasn't sure. a regular open mic. Night. We were hanging out after hours after the club closed at the um, Punchline in Atlanta. And um, it was a bunch of comedians in the room. And I got, and different people were just getting up there and goofing off and doing silly. And my friend made me get up there and do it. And I had everybody in the room dying laughing. And my friend had got it on video and his video got corrupted. So I have no evidence of this <laughs> ever happening. So at some point in the near future, I'm gonna have to do it again. Cause I think I'm funny. <laughs> well, yeah. And you know what, if you think you're funny, that kind of tie that kind of ties in with what Jillian brought up earlier was, you know, the thing that took me the biggest hurdle for me to get over starting my podcast was why am I doing it? Mm. And I was like, oh man, we're gonna have fake imposter jet planes and we're gonna fly all over and do our fake imposter podcast in front of people and they're gonna pay us a bunch of money. And then you're like, all right, listen, we got to get a lot of equipment and we got to get a lot of post editing equipment. We need a, a great microphone. And after a while I said, you know what? The reason I'm doing this is because I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I have 10,000 listeners or five, you know? And it was funny there for a while because I have six kids. And so I'd have five listeners and I call them all up. I'd be, which one of y'all ain't listening? Cause <laughs> there's six of you and I only have five listeners, <laughs> you know, but you have this idea, you need all this post editing equipment. You need this microphone. Finally, I just sat down and I started my podcast. That's all you have to do is just start it. And I started it for $24. I did get a microphone cause it sounded kind of tinny. Mm -hmm. just using the computer mic and then I just started talking and it's sometimes it's just funny to me and, you've been doing stand-up since 1972 mm, okay see that's funny I was born in 1972 see get out of here I me too that's why yeah. I was like wait a minute now. <laughs> hold up good what yeah. But you've been funny since 1972. That's exactly, what exactly. I love it. I love and you it. know, one of the things I wish we could we could do with wisdom, and I, and I'll bring it up, Daryl, uh, who another person I love. If you're not following him, yes, I love Daryl. Um, but he had uh, the the wisdom creator on, and and people were able to ask questions. Dio, yes. yes, yes. I would love to be able to put on here. Uh, Fake imposter uh, this Thursday, nine o'clock Eastern time. Yeah, yeah, me too. Going to be talking about this, and then someone could go in and say, "Oh, let me hit the reminder button," yeah. so it lets me know. Because I'm like you did stand up. I'll tell you one one day I'm going to have to do a show where, and I've mentioned this before, where I talk about how me and some friends we crashed the HBO comedy festival shut up yeah it was so much fun and just a bit of the behind the scenes we had all we all had media passes so not only did we have tickets to every single event then we could go backstage and talk to the people and interview the comedians and i'm talking like stephen colbert 
mm. was the comic of the year. You know, uh, Seth MacFarlane, super cool guy, was there I from family. Him. I mean, I everybody in comedy was there. And, you know, and it's like, uh, hi, I'm uh, Steve Jenkins from Entertainment Weekly. I have a question. You said in your last project, blah, 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 blah. You know, and then it's like, uh, hey, I'm Steve uh, Jordanson. I'm from the New York Times, blah, 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 blah. And then I'm like, hey, I'm Joe uh, from Colorado Springs. <laughs> uh, Bobby McFerrin, you remember him? Uh -huh. uh, he said, don't worry, be happy. He said he wants to punch your grandma in the face. Uh, any comments? And I'm asking like John Landis this, <laughs> you know, and he doesn't know what to do. And we just, after a while, our name got out there and, and they're like, hey, there's these guys that are here. We told them we were from Clear Channel Radio. Um, so we could hear them talking like, hey, have you seen the guys from Clear Channel Radio? And we'd be standing back there. But yeah, that was a, uh, that was a crazy time for sure. I love it. So you travel around doing, do you do like um, shows and things like that? You know what's funny? I do travel around, but I wouldn't call them shows. I have, because of my past, the choices I made, the things I grew up with. I lived at a boy's home for 20 months. That was uh, started by Joe Gibbs, who was the coach of the Washington football team back then. Um, was one of those kids, made bad decisions, hung out with the wrong crowd. Uh, although I don't blame the wrong crowd because mm -hmm. it was my decision to hang out with that crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, but it was, I was always one of those, man, if we could just get him away from that crowd, he, he has unbelievable potential. And so as much as I'd love to say, yeah, I'm going around selling out arenas. Um, I don't, I don't think anybody ends up anywhere. No matter what your faith is, I believe you are, you're put, God puts you here. God places you here. And so rather than going around and doing comedy at clubs and arenas, I speak to church groups and schools, and uh, I spoke to a college last night and got invited back. I'll speak again tomorrow. But I talk about life Yay. experiences, Congrats. drugs, anti-bullying. Hold on, and so hold, being hold, able on. To, hold on, I whoop. can't gloss over that. You had oh, a gotcha. talk last night and they invited you back tomorrow. Congratulations, go ahead. Oh, I'm thank you, talking. thank you. <laughs> but it, being able to, to add the humor to that, mm -hmm. you know, is, is where my, I don't want to call it my mission, but it's, it's my purpose. I feel like that's where I've been put. That's your sweet spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you can make jokes and, and especially younger kids and get them laughing and smiling, but then hit them with that strong message, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's way more, you know, everybody says sometimes when I do this or I do that, I feel like it's more for me than it is for them mm -hmm. when i'm involved in stuff like this i truly believe it is more for me yeah it's i get more out of it than i ever could right from from telling a joke on a stage because yeah i can entertain people and, and get them happy but you know get them laughing but if i can make a if i can impact somebody's life especially at such a young age and i have that for lack of a better term that street cred mm -hmm that, hey, I've been through this, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I tell them, I said, listen, I made mistakes and I didn't even have social media. I didn't even know who was on the phone until I picked it up. If I wanted to see if Bobby could play, I gotta walk all the way to his house. And if he's not home, I gotta walk all the way back, <laughs> you know? And I said, and these drugs out there that you guys have today, I call them, they are weapons of mass destruction. Right. I couldn't even imagine, you know, and I, I was talking to my mom back in August. That's when I turned 50. And uh, I said to my mom, I said, you know what? I didn't even think I'd make it past 21. And that's for true. I said, I'm not going to live past 21. And my mom was funny too. She didn't even miss a beat. She said, I didn't even think you were going to graduate high school. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, we're kind of on the same page there. So yeah, being able to go out and speak and, and add that humor, but then still have that outlet of the the podcast 
um, you know, to be creative and, and kind of off the wall is, is kind of the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I just, mm, I, yay, just kudos and congratulations. And I'm like, congratulations on like doing what you're passionate about. You know what I mean? And be, and not letting anything keep you from it because that is absolutely where, that's where the real magic is, right? When we take all of the experiences, choices, whatever you call it, and we transmute that and we do, we use our superpowers for good and we do good things with it and we give it back to pour out of that yeah. love into others. Because like you said, that's street cray. You can't teach anybody thing, anything that you have not been through. And so everything, everything, everything that anybody has ever been through, there's something that you can take and share with somebody else out of that. So it doesn't matter how much you don't think that you have all of what everybody says you're supposed to have. You got something that somebody else can benefit from, period. I don't care what it is. Yeah. And, and when I go out and talk, I, I, I start... Um like on a dry race board and I dry the, I draw the smallest little square I can draw. And then right around that, I draw just a little bit bigger square. And then I draw the biggest square that the, the dry, uh, the dry race board will let me, excuse me, taking a drink. And then I say, okay, you see this little square right here that I colored in? It's tiny. That's what I can control. Mm. I can control every single thing in that in that colored in square. I said, you see the smaller square right around it? That's everything I can influence. I can't control it, but I can influence it. And then I say this big, huge square. That's everything I can't control and I can't influence. So I try to spend as little a time there as possible and it's hard mm. it's hard you know everyone wants to say and, and i'm not you know whatever biden trump whatever it is i don't get involved in that you know i vote for who i vote for and i move on with my life come on you know why because i can't i can't control it yes you know elon musk bought twitter why i do not know um but i can't i can't control that I can't control the weather outside. I can't control, you know, like I, I was talking the other night and I think Jillian was on it and I said, you know, you, you wake up in the morning, you grab your cup of coffee, you get in the car and on the way to work, you spill that cup of coffee on you. That That's happened. Can't do anything about it. But what you can do is you can tell yourself, man, this is the worst day. I'm having the worst day. I'm like, really? You've been up for 30 minutes. <laughs> Why don't you just say, man, this is the worst five minutes I've had. Hmm. Because if you say it's the worst day, it's, it's going to be a bad day. Mm-hmm. You know, and so you get to work and everyone's looking at you like, oh, you spilled coffee on your pant leg, huh? Hey, imagine if I spilled it on both my pant legs. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's all in your mind. And yes. so when I'm out there speaking and out there, talking to these people and out there engaging with them, you know, it's when you have parents coming up to you and saying, Hey, that was a great talk. I, th- I think you really reached the kids here. You know, is there a time we can take you out to lunch? Cause we have this issue or we want to know how to talk to our kid about this or, you know, that's when, not only your passion, you find that passion, but your fa- your passion can also just smack you in the face. Yes. And the more you try to, you know, no, my passion is really <laughs> running marathons. <laughs> I've only done one marathon in my life, and that was the A&E marathon where they play uh, Law and Order all weekend from Friday at 6 to <laughs> Sunday at 10. <laughs> yeah. I've done that marathon a few times, but, you know, sometimes your passion attaches itself and it just is what it is. You just get busy doing whatever your hand finds to do and you just find yourself right back to where you're supposed to be. Yep. 
I mean, I tell people when I talk, it's like, what do you, what do you want to do? What are you trying to do? You're trying to lose weight, you're trying to eat better, you're trying to exercise more, you're trying to read more books. And I always say, okay, well, decide what you want to do. Decide what you're willing to trade for it. Set your priorities and go to work. Mm-hmm. It's kind of freaking me out right now because my brother-in-law's name is Joe and you kind of sound like him and you're kind of freaking me out right now. I just, it's just, it's weird. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're there's only a few of us in the world and we are, we are awesome. I mean, wait till you meet him. He'll be, he'll be eventually on this app. Wait, wait till y'all meet my bro. Y'all, whoever's listening right now, y'all remember this day and this time that I said that this Joe reminded me of my brother-in-law, Joe. And then y'all are going to be like, oh yeah, I, I see how you was feeling now. It's kind of weird. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I just love the things that you were talking about, about earlier. And, and the last thing I wanted to bring up is, you know, I, I I live with someone who has OCD and, and everybody likes to say, hey, you know what? I'm a little OCD with this <laughs> or I'm a little OCD with that. And I get what they're saying. I don't get offended, Yeah, you know, because they're like, but th- that to me sounds like here's how I prefer something. Uh-huh. You know, here's how I like things to be. Uh-huh. It's know, not you, the same. <laughs> yeah, not the same. And I have ADD. So imagine a couple married, living in the same house. One has ADD and one has OCD. Mm. That is, I mean, you can't even write comedy. You can't even make stuff yeah. up that's better than that. Okay, well, I could give you some additional material for <laughs> right. the Aspie, for the Aspie and the RDHD person living together because we are good and hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet. And, you know, my, my wife and I, we have fun with it, you okay. know. I'll come, she'll come home and I'll be like, I changed one thing in the kitchen. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the last time I did it, imagine your oven mitts. You know, she likes the one on the left hook over the one on the right hook. So all I did in the kitchen was switch those two. And I said, hey, baby, I changed something in the kitchen. And you know what she said? Is it something different than the oven mitts? Like just like that fast, right? You know, but I, I'm not talking about how the way she likes things, you know. Because she saw it immediately, like she couldn't oh, yeah. help it. It's not she yeah. didn't, yeah. It just like her eye immediately when she walked in the room, her eye immediately saw the evidence. Yeah, it's like fact, she probably you. fixed them already before you even said anything. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, and and some of the stuff she doesn't even know she's doing. She right. she climbs in the bed the same exact way every night. She has to. Um, open the door and count things in the garage mm-hmm. to get the bed. She has to walk us through. I mean, it's, it's when you, when you see OCD, it, it live and in person, it's mm-hmm. nothing like you see on the show, like monk right. or, uh, you know, anything in the movies, you know, it's, it's in a way it's fascinating, mm-hmm. you know, cause she's like, how does your brain work like that? when I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. She's like, why are you? She went to work one day and she goes, they're like, Karen, is your, you don't seem like a, a a morning person. Is your husband a morning person? She goes, he's not a morning person. He springs out of bed before the alarm (laughs) even goes off. And then, and then she goes, then he starts making up these songs. And she said, you know what the worst part is? They're catchy. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but it's it's that that yin and yang, you know, that's what yeah. makes us, you know, such a good team. And your wife's you know, name is Karen. Yeah. Tell her I'm sorry. <laughs> right? Yeah. But yesterday when I was speaking at the college, they were like, Your wife must be laughing all the time. I was like, Yeah, you would think. I'm Bless like, you I feel get sorry for everybody this. named Karen right now. I really oh do. Oh my God, right? I said that. Like, really, when it first came out and everybody started doing I was like, mm, y'all, do y'all, y'all do realize there's actually people with that name who aren't like a hard time. Like, no autistic person would ever have any stress if it wasn't the way of our society to make fun of people. 
Yeah, and you know, one of my questions I asked, and, and going back to one of your points first, I don't think that we have become more sensitive. I think that social media especially has a, has given people that conduit Thanks. to express their, Thanks. you know, back in the day, you know, when I was in business school, they would say, you know what, if you had a good customer service experience, you might tell one or two people, That's but right. if you had a bad one, you'll tell 12. Well, now yep. you can walk out and tell a hundred thousand people before you get to your car. I'm How going to blast you on Twitter. Restaurant yes. was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you treat me bad enough, I'm going to blast you on Twitter. Yeah. But one of the questions I asked when I was doing one of my first wisdom talks, my question was, let's say you're watching a comedian, doesn't matter who it is, and they tell a joke that you find offensive. And as soon as he finishes that joke, you find it offensive. They pan to the crowd and you see one of your friends in there just laughing laughing hysterically would that change your relationship your interactions your would it change your thoughts on that on your friend there if, if that's, that's the story of my life that's the story of my life so i'm not a good example of that you know what i mean like i'm always the outside of the joke the crowd laughing at the jokes that i'm looking at people like that's not funny I'm not watching that video with y'all of them two people beating each other up. I'm not watching this video <laughs> yeah. of that person make fun. I don't like, I don't find that funny and I'm not laughing at that with you. And you can call me whatever you want to call me and tell me I don't have a sense of humor. I'm not laughing with you because I do have a brilliant sense of humor and I'm very funny. And I like the comedians that I love are hilarious, right? You're hilarious. It don't take all that. Like if you have to only make jokes where you're making, like make fun of yourself. Like we can make fun of ourselves all day long. You can tell jokes about your family experiences and blah, blah, blah. But for you to just like spend your whole time roasting everybody in the audience or roasting other cultures, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say, you don't you don't like have a whole lot of range. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just don't find it funny. Now, I don't get offended when I watch comedy. So I'm also probably not a good person. They're not talking to me. Why would I be offended? Yeah. And I'm you know what I mean? Just because I don't like it doesn't mean I'm offended. Yeah. And I'm also not a big fan of, uh, let me give you an example. There was a gentleman who was um, talking about his sister, a comedian, and she had passed away. And he told the story and he told it in a, joking manner and after the show this woman came up to him and said you talking about your sister and those jokes were offensive mm -mm. and he said well hold on you know he did he wasn't a jerk about it but he said hold on it's my story it's how i dealt with it it's my sister you don't even know her so what makes you think you have a right to be offended on my behalf. Mm. And I just thought, man, what a great. Brilliant. Yeah, what a great way to handle it. And it just, it made sense. Now, if I was the betting man in Vegas, I bet she went away even more mad than than when she went up to him. Yeah. Probably. But he brought up a great point. It's how, how are you to be offended? You know, when I look at jokes, you know, Yes, timing is a big part of of comedy, but it's also the subject and the target, and they they can be the same, they can be different, but it shouldn't put any one down, and it shouldn't put anything down. Mm -hmm. You know what do they call that? Punch. I didn't even know this till. Dave Chappelle about punching down and mm -hmm. punching mm -hmm. up and yeah. but I but I understand the terminology and yeah. you know but also I I have MS just because I have MS like you said I make it relate to me mm -hmm. just because I have MS doesn't mean I am allowed to tell any single joke of any single realm within MS that I want to just because I have it I don't speak for the MS 
community, the MS Ooh, Society. Ooh, now that's a whole nother subject there, Joe. That's a great point too, because in speaking about being offended or people crossing lines, a lot of times people tend to act like, oh, well, because I'm a black woman, right? Then I have all realm and rights for all black women. So if I say it's offensive, then it must be offensive, offensive for all black. And that's, it don't work like that. Like that's not like, like literally you could be offended and I'm not offended. That doesn't mean that I get to tell you that you shouldn't be offended. Like it don't work right. like that. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I remember, I remember watching a comedian one time and it, it is, it is known that his brother is gay and he told a gay joke and then some people laughed and some people are like whoa and then he said it's okay i talked to my brother about that and he gave me the pink light <laughs> and I, <laughs> I thought man oh man i love you know it. that's funny but i could still understand how people might might see that you know but i'm also the type of person that would go well i don't know if i would have said that joke but I don't hear one joke that I'm, that might be off key and then go, well, their whole show sucked. Right, right. And and that's his lived experience, right? And so if, if a person, uh, people get on people, oh, you got one black friend. And so just because you got a black friend that does this, if you are going to go on stage and you're mulling around this joke and you come to me and say, Andrea, do you think I should tell this joke? Is it offensive? Da, 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 and we talk about it and I say, well, I'm not offended by it. I'm probably also going to have the foresight to say, eh, Joe, you know what? I'm not offended by it, but you might get dragged out of there by a whole bunch of black people if you tell yeah, them. Don't yeah. tell that one. You know what I mean? Or I might say, there is nothing at all offensive about that joke. Tell it. People are going to get mad at you anyway. Tell it anyway. Yeah. I mean, I, I had a black friend. We met at a call center where I was working out. I mean, I still have one, but <laughs> I said to him, I said, man, I, I never thought you and I would become such great friends. And he said, Joe, we're just we're just great friends because I need a white friend in case I got to go to court. <laughs> see, you can tell that joke. Some people feel like you can't tell that joke. You see, there's all kinds of ranges of this stuff, y'all. And guess what? Whether people get offended or not, it has to do with how far along they are on their healing journey. Mm -hmm. So you might have somebody that that might be very, very traumatized. And so they might take something that you say and be super offended by it. It doesn't mean that you said anything wrong. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't be empathetic of that person. Like this guy, this example that Joe just gave, he was empathetic. Sometimes people run up in your face and tell you that what you said is offensive and it ain't even none of their business and you weren't even talking about them and they standing up, they're standing up for me and I'm not even offended. You see, so this is all a whole convoluted mess and only each individual can figure it out for themselves. Right. But mm, I, I like I like when people have the freedom. Right. To be honest and genuine. Right. So if something awkward happens between us, we can laugh about it and that can become a joke later. I also like when people have the substance to be willing to make jokes on their own self and not just always everybody else. And I appreciate that kind of comedy. And to be quite frank, when the incident happened between Chris Rock and Will Smith, I felt justified. I felt like Will Smith slapped Chris Rock for all the times that Chris Rock ever talked about me and all the other black women that he always keep in his mouth all the time. Always got a black woman in his mouth saying something foul. Would I jump up on stage and slap him for that? Would I wish him to not be able to feed his... No, I wouldn't. But if you cross the wrong person and they... That's what you get. Yeah. And, you know, and I think... I think after the fact when when Will Smith came out and apologized, not not to Chris Rock, but he apologized because he, oh man, who was it? Someone was getting an award right after him. Mm -hmm. The people who the movie, the, the movie that he worked on before that he got the award for, the people that came after him in that movie, and I've also, in that award service, and I've also heard him apologize for the project he's working on now because he doesn't want to really cause what he did to cast the negative light on everybody else. Yeah, yeah, and 
you know, it's just, I, I am a big proponent of um, praise in public and criticize in private. Mm-hmm. And, and it could have been, I mean, just imagine the love and light that would have come out saying, hey, Chris Rock, a picture of Chris Rock and, and uh, Will Smith afterwards at an after party somewhere, you know, just, just, you know, chopping it up and getting it out in the air and, and talking about it and saying, Hey, you know, this got squashed. And, but to, to go, I mean, we saw during the commercial break, you know, everybody was coming up to Will Smith and, uh, you know, like Bradley Cooper came up there. Um, who was it? Denzel? I think Denzel came up to someone else too. And they're like, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, this is a, a big stage. It's just, but so I don't understand thing that, that happened, reaction. The hilarious thing that happened around what you're talking about right now is after this incident, I saw all of the, the, the media, um, the, what do you call it? You know, people responding The people who were on Will Smith's side, compiling videos of all the times that this has ever happened before now with other people in Hollywood and how nobody made a big deal out of it. That was one. And the other thing is, what if we weren't talking about Will Smith and Chris Brown? I mean, Chris Rock. Yeah. What if we were talking about Chris Brown <laughs> right. and, you know, and, you know, 50 Cent or whoever? What if we were talking about Eminem and, you know, Ice Cube? Like, would everybody be acting all appalled? What if we were talking about, um, you know, Mike Tyson and uh, Hector Camacho. Would everybody be acting all appalled? Like if we were just talking about two random men and one of the men called the other man's wife out and made fun of her for being bald headed, would we really even be having this conversation? But also from what I understand, they actually did that already. What you're just saying, that it would have been so nice if it had, had happened, they've done that before. They've had a conversation behind the scenes where he told him to keep his wife's name out of his mouth. And I don't know, you know, about you, but most men that I know don't make empty threats. Oh, yeah. And I'm not a big, big threat guy, but going to your point, what if this had been, let's say, we'll just use Bradley Cooper. What if it was Bradley Cooper that got up there and smacked Chris Rock? Or what if it was Will Smith who got up and smacked Bradley Cooper? Does their does their race or, change anything? Or what if it had been Will Smith making fun of Bradley Cooper's wife? Yeah. You know, and when, it, when you when you ponder, does race change anything? You have to ask not only what if Will Smith had a slapped a white man, but also what if he had what if it had been a woman, but also too, what if the black man had been telling a joke about someone the the white man's wife? Would all, would any of this have changed? We have to ask ourselves all of that. And listen. It would have changed. It would be very different. E whether we were talking about two other black people who were in different professions that we didn't hold to such a high standard of highfalutin, you know, social graces, right? Or if it had been a black and a white person, right? Or if Will Smith had been the one telling a joke, all any of, like before you really have a strong opinion about any of this, you really have to really consider all of those different variables because that's how you know, like what kind of person you are, you, right? Yeah, I mean, I was talking a similar subject to someone last week and I said, you know, everybody's talking about swimming in college, women swimming in college and track and field. And these were um, men, transgender who, are now women and they're competing in female sports. Now it's nothing I can control. I don't follow track and field. I don't follow swimming, you know, but there's this big debate of who should compete with who and what's going on. And I said, you know what, this isn't something I'm going to get involved with it because I don't have a dog in the race. I don't know what the best solution is. I'm not in either position, but I did say, what if there was a man 
and he was ranked the the 15th best MMA fighter. And he said, I'm a woman. And now he's competing as a woman. Is swimming different than this former man, now a woman, punching other women in the face? That's a great question. And I'm never going to go sign up to get punched in the face or punch anybody in the face. So I also don't have a dog in that fight and I can't put my two cent worth in on it. I felt the same way, even though I, I do use the bathroom in public. You know, I do. I, I This you would think I would have a dog in this fight, like about going into a public bathroom. But I don't because when I go into the public bathroom, I close the stall and I'm in, my, in there by myself. So I could give a shit about who else is in there. Oh yeah, and so I'm like, I was, I you was probably not don't even want to be involved. in there. Yeah, I was not willing to get involved in that debate either because I, I can't tell y'all what I think the right answer is. I can't say. Yeah, and I'll be like, look, you can come in the bathroom with me, but if this is your first time, you don't know what goes on in the men's room. So <laughs> see, see, and I grew up during the time in the '80s, and and maybe you lived in areas like this. I don't know how vast this was, but I was in California, and late 80s early 90s was the era of the co-ed bathroom like you would go to the nightclub and there would be all people milling around in this big open bathroom so and then being in the military i was in a co-ed barracks so like i i don't have no inkling or concept of flipping out and oh and if there is a line wrapped around the corner at the women's bathroom and i find out that that men's bathroom is open i'm going in there yeah and i, I dare you to try to stop me yeah I'll oh. say I identify as someone who needs to go to the bathroom. Right hey, hey, <laughs> okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, I appreciate all the airtime. I did want to say to Jillian that I'm always here as well. Help you get that podcast off the ground. Always willing to be um, a guest. I can come up with names, although I did come up with one name that my wife nixed. Um, we were going to call it, me and some buddies, we're going to call it audio, A-U-D-I-O, audio, erotic, E-A-R-O-T-I-C, fixation. So audio, erotic, fixation. And she said, um, no. So um, we can come up with a better name. But Andrea, I love listening to you. And thanks for giving me so much airtime. I really appreciate it. It's great whoa, talking to you. Whoa, 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 wait. Tell the people where they can find Oh, Oh, no. Don't tell the people where they can find you. Everybody go to Joe's bio. Follow him on social media. But Joe, I need you to update your link. It's not working. There's a glitch. When I clicked on your my link in your bio, I get a... um a blank uh, browser page. So update your link so we can all go visit your website and you guys go follow him on all his social media links. Um, and let's just continue to connect the dots on this amazing network that we're building. Don't nobody else come up here because I'm about to leave. It's 8.30. I've been with y'all all day. This is ridiculous. I got to get out of here. <laughs> I love y'all so much. Thank you for hanging out with me. Wow, we have made some amazing connections today and built on some things. Woo, woo, woo. I just like three months from now, this community is not even going to be the same. Like we are all, you know, leveling up and going places and, and building upon what we've already done, what we already were doing when we got here. So I'm just very excited and I'm honored to be a part of it. I'm honored to watch everybody's awesomeness, success and growth. I'm amazing to watch. I'm honored to watch all of these amazing collaborations um, and, and it's just really, really an amazing time. So thank you so much for listening. You have been listening to the Living Sugar Free Lifestyle Show, Hump Day Shift. We've been talking about clout and everything else under the sun. And it was all relevant, you guys. It was all relevant. How you impact people, how you affect people, what you leave behind when you've been with people, that's your influence. And everybody has influence. It's what you choose to do with it. Y'all have a wonderful evening. I look forward to talking to y'all tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for Andrea in the morning. Reach out to me if y'all have any questions about anything that we talked about. Follow me on Facebook. I'll connect you in with our groups. There is absolutely an affinity group where you can connect with like-minded people to help you take what you're already doing to the next level. Talk soon.